Welcome back to Live Now from Fox. Good morning to those of you all just now tuning in. I'm Gina Francine. As we continue with your breaking news headlines and top stories this morning, and of course live events, giving you a live look out in New York City as the Botox has set his camera down there on the ground to give you a different view of those who have flocked outside of that Manhattan courtroom. As we know, the first week of testimony at Donald Trump's hush money trial was the scene setter for jurors. Manhattan prosecutors portraying what they say was an illegal scheme to end influenced the 2016 presidential campaign by burying negative stories. Well, now prosecutors are working on filling in the details of how they believe Trump and his allies pulled it off. Joining us live this morning to preview today's proceedings is attorney Seth Barron's wife. Seth, always a pleasure speaking to you. Good morning. Thanks for having me back. Always a pleasure. So many people looking ahead to 930 Eastern time when former President Donald Trump's hush money trial continues. It's in its third week set. Set the stage for us, please. Sure. So we started with jury selection and that was completed within the first week. So we have had our first full week of the trial. We started with uh, David Pecker. He is uh, runs AMI, which is the publishing company. That was the lead for the so-called catch and kill strategy. And we ended the week with Gary Farrow. He is Michael Cohen's banker, and he has laid out the process by which they put in place the home equity line of credit through which the other line was provided. So really what you have here are the two legs of the stool and what the prosecution has done is laid out the basic mechanism for the case. First, you have the payment to Karen McDougal through AMI, and then you have the second payment to Stormy Daniels through uh, the uh, company that was set up by Michael Cohen, essential consultants. And the allegation, of course, is that through these two prongs, you have the payments that were intended to uh, provide for the concealment of information to influence the federal election. I think that for the most part, the trial is running on time. The prosecution is keeping the case moving forward. That's always important when you've impaneled a jury. And uh, Mr. Farrow will take the stand again today. His cross-examination will begin, and he will probably complete his testimony by sometime later this afternoon. Seth, thank you so much for that recap. And, you know, many people looking at this and wanting to know as they see the witness testimony happen. And, you know, sometimes the former president will speak to the media before he enters the courtroom. He's not really pleased with it. He says it's a witch hunt and it's trying to, uh, I guess, get attention from other things going on in today's society with how things have been going inside of the courtroom. Though I want to ask you, do you think are going do you think things are going in the former president's favor? Well, I think the prosecution so far has, for lack of a better phrase, kept the trains running on time. They've put on the basic elements of their case. Uh, they're moving the testimony along. And uh, so far, the strategy seems to be coming into place because what they've done is they've laid out the two basic prongs for the payments. The president has had statements that um, he's provided uh, to the media in the early portion of the morning and particularly in the afternoon when he comes out. And the thing that's interesting in terms of that dynamic is that of course, there is a so-called gag order in place. Um, and, and there's been an indication sometimes that, that that's somehow unique. It is unique to Mr. Trump in, in, in the sense that you, of course, you have a, a very famous defendant who has a unique power to be able to uh, say things that could have a very deep influence in social media. But quite frankly, these are orders that are in place in all criminal proceedings in so far as defendants are not allowed to do or say anything um, that could try to influence the jury or attack witnesses. One of the things that's interesting in terms of this aspect and this component in the case is that there was a hearing on an alleged violation of the gag order in front of Judge Mershon that happened last week. He took that under advisement. And I think that one of the reasons why he's done that is because he wants to see how Mr. Trump behaves. And he is hoping that he doesn't have to try to take some kind of an action because I'm sure he'd much rather focus on just letting the evidence flow in the trial. So um, you're right, those statements do come out from time to time. And I would expect that the judge will probably issue uh, a statement and a ruling with regard to uh, the gag order motion sometime within the next day or two. 
Seth, always a pleasure speaking with you here on Live Now as you are setting the stage to 9.30 this morning when that uh, hush money trial will resume. Is there anything else you'd like to add, anything the viewers and myself need to be keeping a close eye on in the coming days? Well, one final note I would add is that I think it's it, uh, we're certainly going to see Michael Cohen. He'll be appearing shortly in the case. The prosecution knows that he has some very serious credibility issues. So I think what they probably want to do is they want to lay out the corroboration, the documents, the structure, and put that all out in front of the jury so that by the time Michael Cohen comes on the stand, they only have to have a fairly limited reliance upon what he has to say in the case. They know that he has a credibility issue, to put it lightly, but now that they're putting a factual predicate and the documents on to lay that foundation before he comes on the stand, I think that that's probably the strategy that's in mind. So I don't expect to see him taking the stand, um, but you will see uh, other testimony laying the foundation as we see the prosecution laying out their case over the coming days. Great points there, Seth. Thank you again for joining us here on Live Now from Fox. You enjoy the rest of your day.